Felt like doing a tool review, so I'm gonna review my bandsaw. This is a Wen 10 inch bandsaw, model number 3962. And I've had this for about a year. So what I'm gonna do this video is first go through the specs and some of the features that you get with the saw. Then I will make a cut or two. You're gonna see me actually switch out the blade. And then I will wrap up with my likes and dislikes. So getting into the specs, it is a 120 volt motor, 3.5 amp. 3.5 amp is not a lot for a bandsaw, but for a 10 inch bandsaw, it's about what you can expect to get performance wise. This comes with a stand. As you can tell, I don't use the stand. And this was an intentional choice. I put it on top of this cabinet because I am about six foot one and putting it on top of my cabinet puts it a little bit higher spot right above my belly button and that's really comfortable for me work-wise. So I have no idea how stable the stand is. I have no idea how that stand affects vibration because I don't use the stand. So one of the features that comes with this saw is a fence. A fence slides um, and locks down and there's a little scale there on the front as you can see with a um, little gauge. It's pretty nice. Um, there's also a light uh, there's the switch right there. This I use a fair amount. Um, it's surprising to me how often I want just a little bit of illumination in my shop, and that light always comes in handy for that purpose. The saw also has a port for you to attach a hose for dust collection. I've never used it, not because I don't want to, but because I just don't have a good setup to do that at the moment. I'm considering putting a shop vac in the cabinet um, right there, but I haven't done that yet. Um, so I have no idea how the dust collection works, how effective it is because I've never used it. It also comes with a miter gauge, which is one of those things that I thought that I would never use, but I'm surprised at how often I actually do use it. Um, it's nice to have something ready to go that passes a piece of wood over the blade at 90 degrees. So even though it might not be on the table all the time, I do use it here and there. So going through the anatomy of the saw, up here we have the tensioning knob. This is what you would use to tension and detension the blade. Here is the lock knob for the upper housing unit. So you twist it and the upper housing portion pops open and you can get a peek inside. You can see the tensioning mechanism there. The next uh, knob is actually two knobs in one. Uh, it raises and lowers the blade guard, but the front knob here actually tightens, uh, sort of locks and unlocks that function. So you have to twist it to unlock it and then use the second knob to raise and lower the blade guard. You can get a maximum of six inches of resaw height on this, which is, I think, the most of any 10 inch saw that I've seen. I've only used that capacity once, but if you want it, it's nice to know it's there. So there are two little black knobs right here and one on the other side. These actually control adjustment of the guide bearings. The guide bearings are these two bearings to the left and to the right of the blade. As the name would suggest, guide bearings are um, intended to guide the saw blade. I don't profess to be a bandsaw expert. There are a couple schools of thought as to how you ought to set up these guide bearings. My theory is this. If you turn the saw on, these bearings are moving at all times. They are too close to the blade. They're not intended to touch the blade at all times. But if you move the blade slightly, even just a little bit, that should activate one or the other of the guide bearings. Because again, the purpose is to guide the blade. And if they're not set up close enough to the blade to do that, then what's the point? So I eyeball it. And the test I always do is I flip the uh, saw on. And if the bearings are moving, I know they're too close. And then um, if they don't move with just a little bit of a push, um, then I know they're too far away. So next is the lower housing knob, same as the upper. You twist it and it opens up. Just make sure the handle of the fence is in the upright position and it pops open. Hard to see, but on the bottom right, there's a big hole. That is where the dust collection hose attaches to on the other side. That's where the dust gets sucked through. So the table actually tilts. It tilts up to 45 degrees and that tilting action is achieved through some trunnions on the bottom. But tilting the table is kind of a pain in the ass, and it might be due to a design flaw. So let me show you what I mean. 
uh, there is a knob on the back that you need to tighten and loosen in order to adjust the table right here. When the knob is fully to the right here, which is where it usually is, it's tightened, meaning the table won't move. When it's to the left, it's detensioned. The problem is when you move it to the left, it hits the table and it stops moving after a certain point. So I had to finagle this to make sure that the tension was just so that when I moved it all the way to the left before it hit the table, that would be enough for me to actually adjust the table. So that might be something that when would want to look at for future iterations of this saw. So I'm going to tilt and then untilt the table for you. Uh, tilting is a two-handed operation, so I had to put the camera up. The cool thing is the fence, the miter gauge, they're both still functional when you tilt the table. And this is all the way to the right, so this should be 45. So just checking it with a square, and it seems to be bang on. One really cool thing about the saw, I have no idea if other bandsaws have this feature, but there's this little flat-headed knob thing uh, that lets you adjust to make sure your table is at 90 degrees to the blade. The way it works is the table, uh, when you push it down, actually contacts this little knob piece here. So you push the table down, and uh, it will contact right on that piece. And... If it's not 90 degrees, if your table's not 90 degrees to the blade, you can adjust that little knob to achieve exactly 90, which I think is really cool. So I'm going to check with this speed square, and that seems to be uh, pretty good. You could do some adjustment if you want to, but uh, for me, that is going to be just fine. So nifty little feature. So I'm going to do the nickel test, but I'm doing it under protest. The nickel test, for those of you that don't know, is where you take a nickel and you put it on the table of your bandsaw and you turn on the machine. If the vibrations cause the nickel to fall over, you have too much vibration on your saw. If the nickel doesn't fall over, then you're just fine. I've always thought this was kind of silly because it A, doesn't measure how much vibration is actually occurring. B, it's sort of a weird threshold to use. The, the amount of vibration that's gonna cause a nickel to just barely not fall over is probably just a hair slice away from what's going to cause it to fall over and then there's no industry standard for what's an acceptable level of vibration or not but because it's the test i'll do the test so i turn the saw on you can see the nickel is moving just a little bit um, not tipping over i'm going to try and slam the table with my hand to create more vibration and i can finally get it to dump so i think the test is a little silly but for what it's worth uh, the wind bandsaw here passes that nickel test if vibrations are a concern for you uh, you can use some sort of foam or some sort of packing foam. I'm not sure what that's called. And you can put it under your saw. I don't know how that would work if you're using the stand. But if you're using it just on a cabinet, that's one way to cut down on vibration. But not a problem for me. So time to talk about this blade. The saw will take any 72-inch blade that's between 1 8 and 1 half inch. But the stock blade that comes with this saw is 3 8 of an inch. And it only took me a couple of cuts to realize that this is not really a suitable blade for cutting curves, not at least for my purposes. So you can tell there's not much pitch or residue on it because I almost immediately went out and bought a new blade. But I'm going to show you what I mean as far as the curve cutting issues. So I have here a uh, half inch piece of plywood and I'm going to cut a subtle curve all along the length of it. Uh, just a bit of a safety heads up. Many of you know this, but in case you don't, the blade guard should be low and close to the stock when you're cutting on a bandsaw. What you don't want to do is have the blade guard um, up like, uh, like this um, when you're making a cut because A, that's a lot of exposed blade that's kind of dangerous, but B, there's less protection. The guides don't sort of stiffen up the blade as you um, cut it, so it's more prone to breaking. So here I'm going to cut, and I'm sp I've sped this up at two times speed. Um, as you can kind of see, that pencil line, it's not really all that difficult looking of a curve, but I am struggling to, to follow it. And right about here, I had to go slow because it felt like I was possibly going to snap the blade. So uh, the hardest part was probably at the bottom uh, toward the end of the cut. And that's where it got really difficult to, to follow, and I had to back off and cut, back off and cut. So here's that cut. 
it kind of looks okay, but there are some jagged lines where I had to sort of back up, restart, back up, restart, because if I had followed that curve, the blade might have snapped. Definitely toward the end here, you can see where I had to really sort of back up and slowly chip away at that. So almost instantly, I went out and bought a new blade. Um, I bought a Carter bandsaw blade. It is uh, 3 16 of an inch, so half the width of the stock blade, a 10 tooth per inch. I think it's a skip tooth blade. And I am very happy with this. It cuts curves very well, which I will show you in a sec. I should mention, though, that the blade I bought did, in fact, break on the weld a few weeks ago. Um, but Carter's customer service was great. They sent me a new one, no charge, um, and replaced it. So here I am swapping out the stock blade with the Carter blade that I use most often. You can see I'm taking off the guide rail for the fence. Every time you want to swap a blade out, you have to take that guide rail off. And that's kind of annoying because it's attached at four different points with four knobs. And it's just sort of a hassle. So I got so sick of it that I just stopped using the fence entirely. And if you see, I have that little piece of wood to the left of my table. I just used that as a temporary fence and clamped it down whenever I needed to. But if you want to use one blade for resawing and one blade for curves, just know that each time you want to swap those out, you have to take off the entirety of that fence system, which can kind of be a pain in the ass. So just a word about blade alignment on the wheel. Some people say that the middle of the blade should be in the middle of the wheel. Some folks say that the gussets, the deepest part of the, or the gullet rather, between the blade should be in the middle part of the wheel. I go with middle blade, middle of the wheel. I have no idea which is better. That's just my personal preference. So I tension up the blade until I get about no more than an eighth of deflection. That's about the sweet spot right there for me. There are various jigs and guides you can use to check it, but I just go by feel. I always flip it on just to make sure the, the blade is tracking in the middle of the wheel. And it seems to be here. You'll know pretty quickly whether it is or isn't. So more than a few seconds is all you need. But if it isn't tracking, this knob in the back tilts that wheel and that helps it uh, track in the middle. So if it's on one edge or the other edge, you can always just uh, fiddle with that knob in the back until, it's, until it starts tracking right down the middle. So I'm gonna cut a much sharper curve with this uh, smaller blade than the stock blade just to show you how much better that is at cutting curves. I think if you buy a bandsaw of 10 inch or smaller variety, you're mostly cutting curves because resawing is a very difficult operation for a bandsaw and most 10 inch or smaller bandsaws just don't have the power to cut through, say oak or maple, much more than a couple of inches. So for resawing, it's probably not ideal, but for cutting curves, it does a pretty good job with the right blade. So let me wrap up with my likes and my dislikes. My chief like with this saw is the price. I paid 250 bucks for this saw. It retails nowadays for about 260. I don't know of any other 10 inch bandsaw you could get for 260 bucks period, let alone one that has a stand, that has a tilting table, that has six inches of resaw capacity, that has a fence, that has a miter gauge, that has a light, that has a dust collection port. All of these features come standard with this bandsaw. And for 260 bucks, I think that is an absolute steal. That being said, realistically, if you want to cut curves with this bandsaw, you're looking at about 290 bucks because the stock blade just is not suitable for cutting anything more than a light, gentle curve. So if you want to cut tighter curves, you need to buy a separate blade, and that's going to run you about 20 or 30 bucks. So you need to price that in when you are uh, costing out this saw if you want to cut curves. One thing that I really don't like about this saw is the fact that I had to disassemble the entire fence and guide rail system when I had to swap out the blade. And it annoyed me so much that I just stopped using the fence. I made my own shop made uh, jig with a piece of rare earth magnet attached so I could keep it on the saw at all times. And I would just clamp it to the table whenever I wanted a fence. And it had the added benefit, if I put it in this orientation, of being able to cut 45 degrees as well. I've since gone back to using the fence because I don't swap out my blade. I stick with just one blade, the 3 16 inch blade. But if you're swapping out blades, often say one for resaw and one for curves, then having to disassemble all of that fence and the guide rail is a pain in the ass. At least it was for me. Overall, though, I really have to say my impression of uh, WEN as a brand is only getting better with each tool that I buy from them. This is now my third 
major tool purchase from when I bought that drill press on the right uh, three years ago, this oscillating belt spindle sander last year, and this bandsaw, and each have been very solid and very affordable. They are great tools for folks who are just getting started in the hobby or the craft, and I very much recommend getting this bandsaw if you're in that group.